Could I have your attention, please? In compliance with state law, an inspection of emergency exits from this building has been conducted. All exits are open and clear at this time. Exits are located at the floor level on the north and south ends of the buildings. Exits at the top of the seating area on the east and west side. Thank you.
Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Yancey Freeman, and I am thrilled to serve as the 12th Chancellor of the University of Tennessee at Martin. I am so excited to see you here and so excited to participate in this ceremony with our new graduates. Families, if you are ex as excited as I am, and I hope you are, let me hear you say, go, Ma go Skyhawks. I didn't hear you, go Skyhawks. Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the fall commencement 2023. This is such an exciting day in the life of a university and, the, and particularly in the lives of all students who are about to graduate and have their degrees conferred. Everyone graduating today has faced unique challenges and disruptions to their lives and yet they persisted and made it through those trying times to reach this day and this moment. Now, in a previous life, I've always thought I looked like Denzel Washington. He is one of my favorite actors. And so I am going to quote him today. Denzel said, dreams without goals are just dreams. And ultimately, they fuel disappointment. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply discipline but more importantly, consistency, because without commitment, you'll never start, but without consistency, you'll never finish. Congratulations, and graduates know that I admire your dreams, your commitment, and your consistency to complete your journey and to earn your degree at UTM. Let's give them a big round of applause. And now, Reverend Mr. Rodney Free, campus minister with the Skyhawk Catholic Mi Campus Ministry, joins us to offer the invocation for today's ceremony. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of joy and hope, we thank you for this time that we may honor those graduating today. Your spirit of wisdom has empowered their hard work and discipline in such a way that their hunger for learning has been nourished with knowledge, discovery, creativity, and determination. As they prepare to walk across this stage to receive their diplomas, let them walk in prayerful thanksgiving for the many blessings that have brought them to this moment. In thanksgiving, we pray for their families and the many who have sacrificed and worked to see them to this day. In Thanksgiving, we pray for the faculty and staff who have challenged, cared, and crafted them along this academic journey. In Thanksgiving, we pray for fellow students who have taught them about friendship, collaboration, and sharing. As they are faced with new challenges, may your grace cover their anxieties and fears so they may stay encouraged about the future. Give them patience and hope to energize their search for work in their chosen fields. Give them courage to face the challenges of finding a place in society where they might live in peace, service, and gratitude. Give them strength to resist the temptations of greed, laziness, pride, and envy as they strive to do and be their best. May your spirit guide them as they unfold the next chapters of their lives. Help them to enliven hope in the world and bring good things to their communities. And may this celebration be a reflection of the blessings that we find in knowing and loving you. For this is the day you have made. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Free. Please be seated. Our processional and recessional music is provided by Dr. Elaine Harris, professor of music in the Department of Music. In October of this year, 
Dr. Harris was inducted into the 2023 Steinway and Sons Teachers Hall of Fame as a member of the Hall's fifth induction class. She was nominated to the honor by Amro Music of Memphis. The Steinway and Sons Teachers Hall of Fame is a prestigious des destination recognizing the work of North America's most committed and passionate piano educators. Dr. Harris has been teaching piano for more than 50 years. Additionally, Dr. Harris performed on a Steinway piano. The University of Tennessee at Martin is proud to be an all Steinway school, part of an elite group of schools and conservatories around the world to hold the title. Thank you again, Dr. Harris, for your many contributions to UT Martin, and we congratulate you on achieving this prestigious honor. Let's give her a big round of applause. Well, welcome again to our fall 2023 commencement ceremony for graduates in the College of Education, Health and Behavioral Sciences, the College of Engineering and Natural Sciences, and the College of Humanities and Fine Arts. We are pleased to have the parents, families, friends, faculty, and staff joining us today. Today's graduates represent 50 different Tennessee counties and 25 other states, we're gonna to try to see if we can read these, including Alabama, Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, North Dakota, South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, Virginia, Washington, and Wisconsin. I think I'm playing musical states here. We also have graduates from the nations of Canada and France. Let's give a big round of, of applause for that diversity. <laughs> Critical to the success of today's graduates is the UTM faculty. Today's graduates will remember the faculty for their wisdom and their counsel. Faculty, will you please stand and let us express our appreciation for what you mean to us. Thank you, you may be seated. Our mace bearer today is Dr. Daniel Pig, professor of English in the College of Humanities and Fine Arts. Dr. Pig is a University of Tennessee Alumni Association Distinguished Service Professor. Thank you, Dr. Pig. Our processional marshals are as follows. Please stand as I call your name and continue standing. Faculty Senate President, Dr. Dan McDonough. Faculty Senate Pre Past President, Dr. Clinton Smith. Senior Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration, Ms. Petra McPherson. Interim Vice Chancellor for University Advancement, Ms. Gina Curtis Swafford. Others joining me on the platform today include, and please stand as I call your name, Provost and Senior Vice Chancellor, Dr. Philip Acre Cavalier, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Dr. Andy Luter. Dean of the College of Education, Health and Behavioral Sciences, Dean Cindy West. Interim Dean of the College of Engineering and Natural Sciences, Dr. Nancy Bushhouse. Dean of the College of Humanities and Fine Arts, Dr. Jeffrey Bibby. And Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. Joey Melhorn. And then finally, Dr. Eric Norberg, Dean of the Paul and Martha Meek Library. Also joining me on the platform is Student Government Association President, Ms. Faith Wilkin Pilkington, who will be bringing greetings from the student body for today's graduates. Mr. Randy Boyd, President of the University of Tennessee System, who will bring greetings from the UT system later in the program. 
And then finally, our commencement speaker, Ms. Kamaria Seymour, Chief Human Resources Officer of Etsy.com. We thank you all for being with us today. You'll note in the back of your program the names of our outstanding faculty awards recipients. We have two award recipients in attendance today. Faculty, please stand as I call your name so we can recognize you. The recipient of the Outstanding Academic Advisor Award is Ms. Tommy McCutcheon. She is an instructor in communications. And the recipient of the Outstanding UTAA Teacher Award is Dr. David Dietrich, Professor of Counseling. We appreciate your contributions to the University of Tennessee at Martin. Also listed in the back of your programs are the names of our faculty members who are retiring this year. We are grateful for their many contributions to the university. Now, I am pleased to introduce our special music for today. Ms. Caroline Oldfather is one of today's graduates from Alabama, graduating with a Bachelor of Music degree with a concentration in voice performance. Caroline will sing Latimus Tay, Mozart's Mass in, in C minor, and Dr. Harris will accompany uh, her on the piano.
Thank you for that beautiful music. We appreciate your performance. Now we are delighted to welcome our commencement speaker for today's ceremony, Ms. Kimaria Seymour. Kim is no stranger to UT Martin. She is a 1992 alumna, and we welcome her back to deliver today's keynote address. With over 25 years managing human resources from revenue generating commercial businesses to vast global servicing organizations, Kim has demonstrated ability to architect transformation, forge connections, deliver insights, and link talent to strategy. Kim is a trusted advisor and thought partner and has successfully built world-class business teams across different industries, functions, geographies, and environments. She is a leader with people operations expertise and ensures that the employee side of the business equation enables execution of strategic objectives. She focuses on the quality of the talent in the business, the culture being created, the effectiveness of programs and policies, workforce dynamics, change strategy, and inclusive leadership, among other key levers. Kim's expertise is rooted in strong business acumen and forward-thinking HR strategies in the areas of talent assessment, succession planning, organizational design, performance management, labor relations, benefits, acquisitions, divestitures, and coaching. Kim joined Etsy to drive global strategy in all areas that impact the company's talent. She oversees all aspects of the company's human capital plan with a strong emphasis on talent, leadership, diversity, and organizational effectiveness. Prior to joining Etsy, Kim served as Chief People Officer at Weight Watchers where she developed and delivered impactful human capital strategies. Prior to Weight Watchers, she held successfully progressive roles at American Express, Home Depot, and General Electric. Kim serves on the board of directors of RHR International and the board of trustees for Fisk University, a historically black college university. She has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, entrepreneur.com, Forbes.com, and Bloomberg, and speaks on leadership and culture globally. Kim is a perfect example of where a UTM degree can take you. Perhaps the most unknown fact uh, about Kim is that she reintroduced me to my wife almost 30 years ago. She is a dear friend with impeccable integrity and a heart bigger than this room. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Kamaria Seymour as our speaker this afternoon. Greetings, graduates. I am one of the few things standing between you and true adulthood, so you should probably want me to talk as long as I can. <laughs> I've been asked to do commencement addresses before, and I usually say no. And the reason I say no is because I understand the assignment. They want me to inspire you, and they want me to excite you and they want me to galvanize you, and if I can call forth a tear or two from you, extra points. I am not that kind of speaker, um, probably because I'm from Memphis and probably because I went to UT Martin. But when you're gonna do a speech like this, the smart thing to do is to Google great commencement addresses. So that's what I did, and I watched a couple, I might have watched a thousand. Um, and I heard a lot of reach for the stars and follow your passion. You can do anything your mind can conceive and climb every mountain and be your authentic self. And because I do what I do and I'm from where I'm from and I went to UT Martin, I was wondering where, what world do these people live in? And maybe they don't have bills to pay. I'm not that kind of speaker, so I thought I would take the tact of what do I wish someone had said to me when I was sitting where you're sitting? What do I wish I had known? Because 
Even though it occurred to me that maybe they don't have bills to pay, I know that you do or that you will, and that the parents in the audience will appreciate the fact that I know that their goal is to get you off of their payroll and onto mine. So, but before I say that, truthfully, I don't disagree with any of the live your best life language. I want you to live your best life, but maybe not right now. Maybe it takes a while for you to know what your passion is. Maybe it takes a while for you to know what your best life looks like. And that's okay. That's normal. That's smart. So for now, focus on getting that job or that next degree and doing really, really well at that. Knocking it out of the park. And that, my fellow Skyhawks, or Pacers if you graduated in 1992, I can help you with. So, as you heard, I'm a graduate of UT Martin, so I'm a pragmatic sort. I know that will resonate with some of you. I'm proud of that. I have remained so despite living in New York City, which is a very interesting place, for 15 years, and despite working in corporate America for even longer than that. I built a whole career off of who I became right here at UT Martin. So I'm not here interested in winning any oratory awards, very much not my personality. I'm interested in helping you be successful on the road that you're about to embark upon. So bear with me. For this, again, I went down the what do I wish someone had told me as I was graduating college? But first, what makes me qualified to speak on this question? There are a lot of fancy articulations of what I do. I have a long resume, long CV. You heard a lot of it just now. But when you boil it down, I hire, assess, develop, progress, and if necessary, fire people. And because that's what I do, I set and execute the talent strategy of companies, big and small. Most of you are headed in the direction of some sort of company, some sort of collection of people, eventually. Whether it be tech, entrepreneurial, startup, agricultural, whatever the thing is, various industries. So trust me on the points to come, because I've seen a thing or two. I've seen thousands upon thousands of people do what you are about to embark upon. And at one point, I was one of them. So what do I wish I had known? In no particular order. No one told me that the purpose of these four years, or however long it took you to get here, I'm not judging, was not a GPA. In fact, my apologies to all of the academics in the audience. Beyond the first job you get, or the first degree program you apply to, no one for the rest of your life is going to ask you what your GPA was. Some of you are really, 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 really happy to hear that. <laughs> GPA is a measure. It's an outcome. It is what happened along the way. It is what you learned along the way. It is what you demonstrated along the way that makes you valuable to someone like me, not the GPA. So I wish someone had told me that the grade wasn't the goal. One of the real rewards of college was knowing how to think critically and for yourself. I'm hopeful that along the way at UT Martin that you have been presented with subject matter or frameworks or methodologies or philosophies or approaches or even people that just did not make sense to you, that challenged your worldview, and that you were curious enough and open-minded enough to explore and pursue knowledge and form your own ideas, and when necessary, that you can challenge effectively. What I wish someone had told me is that it's not enough to have an opinion. Everyone has one. And in this world that we live in right now, people are very free 
to opine about whatever that particular opinion is as if it is fact. Once you have an opinion, you need to be solution-oriented about what the problem solve is. The last thing the world needs is another opinion with absolutely no idea of how to put words into action. Don't just come with a problem. Have an informed opinion on the solution and be able to construct a good case, articulate it well, influence people around to your point of view, and at the end of the day, execute. I didn't know that it's not just you somewhere in a cubicle putting your head down, working hard, working solo, working individually, that the real key to success, the difference between those who are just okay and those who are phenomenal, in business at least, and beyond that, is that you have to know how to work with and through other people. If you were ever in student government, and I will pause to say I was. Back then, we had Secretary of Minority Affairs. I was that. We had McCord Hall. I don't know if that still exists, but I was president of that. We had, I was the Chief Justice of Student Court. But if you were ever in student government, or if you were in a fraternity and sorority, did that too, ski we my sorors, or you worked on a group project, You've witnessed the good and bad side of trying to get a collective of people to set a goal, to get people to agree on that goal. We call that a line in corporate speak. And to agree on the path forward. You've been in a situation where you had to hold people accountable to deliverables with no excuses. You figured out how to inspire or if necessary, work around the laggards. You know who I'm talking about. The unmotivated, the uninspired, sometimes the unintelligent, the unreliable, the ones who were supposed to do the thing at the time, the way they said they would do it, but when the deadline got there, nothing. You've witnessed that. Just make sure you aren't those people. And when it's necessary, you figure out how to work around them. This is a skill. And it's a skill that not a lot of people have. But I know you learned that here. I wish I had learned way earlier that the best outcomes result from being able to work, communicate, and collaborate across lines of difference. It is so easy to stay in your little bubble with people who think act, look like you. That is not the way to be successful. You can stay in your bubble, you'll be lonely in that bubble, you'll be broke in that bubble. I suggest that you learn how to surround yourself with people who are a 360 degree look of the world around you. And I said look, but I don't even really mean look. Diversity is one of those terms that we have to be a little bit more expansive about. It also means diversity of thought. It means diversity of approach. It means diversity of abilities. Seek that. Surround yourself with that. The echo chamber is not your friend. I wish I had known that earlier. No one told me how much relationships matter. So, not only am I Southern, which distinguishes me in New York City, I am an introvert, a true card-carrying introvert, which means that people drain me. I know this about myself. I would rather be in a room with the door closed than be in a room full of thousands of people trying to connect. I had to get over that. I completely had to get over the notion that I grew up with that there is a separation of work and home. Well, I didn't really get over it. I just fake it really well now. You figure out your one thing that you can connect with people on. In New York, it's usually golf, dogs, children. I don't do any of those things, so I choose shopping. Find your thing and connect with people over it. But what you can't do is say networking is not my thing. 
You've got to figure out how to connect with other people. Why? Because relationships are about trust. And you can't trust if you don't connect. So you have to put yourself out there across lines of difference, across personality traits, to figure out how to connect with other people. And it's not just because that's a nice thing to do. It is because these are the people who you can learn from, who will clear an obstacle for you, who will give you some information that perhaps you don't have or that you wouldn't have if they did not help you. But they are also the same people that you can do that for. So another point I want to make, and this is one that I learned at UT Martin, don't be afraid to lift other people up as you climb. Success isn't like pie. It's not the more they get, the less there is for you. Figure out how to cheer for others, celebrate others. I promise you, you will benefit. So back on this relationship point, I grew up thinking that hard work alone would win. I just want you to understand, it doesn't mean don't work hard. Absolutely do. But that alone will not spell success. That is absolutely not the way it works, at least not in the corporate world, and frankly, not in any other world that I know of either. Who knows your work? Who knows you? Who's speaking on your behalf? It may not matter immediately, but eventually it will matter. And I wish I had known that sooner. What I didn't know is that feedback in college generally comes in the form of grades. But in work, by the time you get that grade, grade could mean ratings, it could mean um, promotion, it could mean your raise. But by the time you get there, it's too late. So you've got to get comfortable asking for feedback. You have got to get comfortable asking someone that you trust how you can get better at what you do. Who is the best person that they've ever seen do it and figure out what the gap is between how you show up and what that person is doing. That will serve you well. How do you know what to work on otherwise? So since we're on the subject of grades, Let's talk about failure. I wish my overachieving model student self had known that it was bound to happen. But that how I rebounded, what I learned and applied to the next situation, how I took ownership of whatever the thing was, and how resilient I was in the bounce back, far overshadowed whatever the failure was in the long run. I may have failed at something, but I never failed at the same thing twice. Do that. I may have gotten knocked down, but I never stayed down. In Tennessee, we're built for that, that resilience. I learned that at UT Martin and Memphis. I felt like I had to have it all figured out immediately. I didn't. There was time, time to experiment, time to experience, time to find my strengths and work on my gaps. Most people have had roles that they have hated or roles that they didn't anticipate that ended up being the most valuable for them developmentally. I'm one of those people. I had a plan leaving UT Martin. I had a plan coming into UT Martin. I was gonna come here, graduate with a BS in political science, which is what I did. Then I was gonna go to law school, which is what I did, Vanderbilt. And then I was going to be a DA, and then I was going to run for office. I thought I could start with senator. That is not what happened. First of all, I did um, intern at Tennessee State Capitol for Representative Roy Heron, who is also a Martin alum who just passed. And one of the things Roy told me was I had to work on my diplomacy skills. So I wasn't gonna do well in politics. He was probably right, so I went into corporate America where, and worked myself into the position where I didn't have to be as diplomatic. But things changed. I'm clearly not a senator yet, but the changes worked out for me. My mind was open. 
it was okay. Time and experience revealed a bigger plan and led me down a different path. And that path, okay, worked out pretty well for me, I think. And it will for you too. Be open, be open to the failures as well as the successes. I wish I knew then that what trips you up is rarely what you are trying to do. It is usually the way you go about it. Now I don't have a whole, well actually I have a million examples of that, but none that I can necessarily articulate right now. But one day, you are gonna look back after something went wrong and you're gonna say, oh, that's what Kim was talking about. It will become clear that it's not the what, it is the way. I wish someone had mentioned that school is never really over. You should never stop learning, never think you already have all of the answers. Stay curious. Not too long ago, this thing called AI was more of a plot device in a movie than it was reality. Now, it is upending everything. It is doing whole jobs. It is writing whole papers. Some of you might know about that. AI was just a figment of someone's imagination, or at least it was not something that most people ever saw coming. And yet, here we are. So I tell you, learn, adapt, never stop learning. So that's all my kind of highfalutin advice. I have some practical ones I want to throw in here. As someone who works in HR, who lived through the pandemic and all the things we put in place during it, and who has witness what has gone on during and since. Go into the office. I don't care if you have a remote job. I don't care if you can work hybrid. You have not seen the movie well enough yet to be good at whatever it is you're trying to do. And if you are trying to become a leader a boss, a CEO, an executive, or just keep your job, that's not gonna happen from your couch. Go into the office. You will distinguish yourself from all of the people who are sitting on their couch in their pajamas. Trust me on this, at Etsy, we only really have to go into the office four to six days a month. You can do the math, that turns out to be about once a week. Some people do, some people don't. But I guarantee you I know the ones who do. They have figured out when we are there and they show up. We are human. So when we are thinking about projects and jobs and money and whatever else we're thinking about, those people jump to mind before the ones that I never see. Go into the office. Now, 30 years down the road, when you are where I am, you can work from wherever you want to work from. I will never be back in the office five days a week ever again for the rest of my career. But I don't have to. You need to. Go into the office. That's all I'm going to say. Someone send me a message in about 10 years and let me know if what I said is true. I already know the answer. For those going to jobs from here, another practical thing. Whenever I look at my investment statement, I'm generally pretty pleased, but I'm never completely pleased. And the reason is I can't help every single time but think about that it's missing many, 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 many zeros because I did not immediately start investing in my 401k in an investment account. So you probably didn't expect to hear that type of advice. But we're talking millions of dollars here that are poof because I wanted to travel I wanted to buy the clothes, I wanted the car, I wanted the things. What I should have wanted was a 401k 
that could help me when Social Security inevitably goes away. Please think about your financial future now. Day one, first check, $200 going somewhere that you, you won't miss it. You were broke on Friday. On Monday, you had your first job. Act like you never saw it from day one. Google all the articles on compounding interest and you will know exactly what I'm talking about. You do not want to be me 30 some odd years later looking at what is by all accounts a healthy situation but no, it could have been two, three million dollars beyond that. And I didn't make up those numbers, Google it. Thank me later, okay. Next, I wish I knew earlier not to let anyone else define success for me. I know that now. I've lived through a pandemic, as we all have. I've lived through cancer. I've been in a coma, all the things. Time is precious. And no one else's definition of success matters but mine. And what success looks like to me now, options. Options never to have to do anything that I don't want to do with anybody that I don't want to do it with, for anyone that I don't want to do it for. That is success. So I stand here today successful. From the time I left UT Martin, that is what I worked for. I would ask you, spend some time over these next several years thinking, out, thinking about what's really important to you and work toward that. Not what your mama wanted, not what your daddy wanted, sorry. Not what your friends wanted, what is important to you. That's all that matters. I wish I knew that I could stay me. Actually, I did know that. Unfortunately for everyone around me, um, I've done well because I'm very much still Kim from UT Martin, extremely. I'm unimpressed by posturing, unbothered by opinions. I define success for myself. I'm unwavering in my integrity. And one of the things I'm most proud of, I am absolutely loyal to my friends, chief of whom I met right here on UT Martin's campus, who is in my life to this day, keeping me grounded, I call her Soror, you call her First Lady Freeman. And I also happen to be pretty fond of her husband too. This will distinguish you from people who sway with the wind. I'm not that person. I am not that person because of what I met, what I learned here. This last one is basic. I've read the articles, I've done the interviews, I've coached the CEOs, all the things. I speak all the time espousing the many theories of work and leadership and what success looks like. People want to hear me use the big words and the long words to talk about that. But since I'm at UT Martin amongst my people, I will tell you, you know what it all boils down to. Don't be a jerk. That's it. In life, in work, don't be a jerk. I tend to work for places with really good cultures. The advantage of a really good culture is you know who the jerks are. Don't be that person. They, don't, they do not succeed in the long run. Every now and again, one slips through. But I am very much a fan of anti-jerkdom. That means treat people well. It means at all levels, all generations, all creeds, all walks of life, treat people well. Think about how you want someone to treat your mother and then do that. Think about the worst person you've ever had to deal with and don't do that. Simple, don't be a jerk. That's what I look for. Now when you look back on this day, you, like me, may not remember my name. I remember my name. I don't remember the name of the person who gave this for me in 1992. But I hope you remember a couple of the things that set you up for success 
and built on what UT Martin has given you. Now, go out there and show them who we are, Skyhawks. Thanks. Thank you, Kim. You honor your alma mater with your presence and your success. Thank you for being here today. So let's give her one more big round of applause. Making today's announcement of the Paul and Martha Meek Leadership Awards is Dr. Andy Luter, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Dr. Paul Meek was a leader at UT Martin in multiple roles from 1934 to 1967. As executive officer and then chancellor, Dr. Meek led our campus through many difficult challenges and transitions, including a world war that nearly caused the institution to close permanently. However, through Dr. Meek's leadership, the institution survived and soon began to thrive, leading to the institution we know today. Our campus library is named after Dr. Meek to honor his contributions to the university. First awarded in 1970, the Paul and Martha Meek Leadership Award was established to recognize graduating seniors that have demonstrated outstanding qualities of leadership while pursuing their education at the University of Tennessee at Martin. The award was originally funded by the three Meek children to honor their parents and to honor the students that embodied the same spirit of leadership shared by Dr. Meek. Students are nominated for this award by the professional staff in student affairs. If I call your name, please come to the stage to be recognized. Today's first recipient of the Paul and Martha Meek Leadership Award is Derek Burton, a communications major from Cordova, Tennessee. Derek is everywhere around campus, attending most on-campus events. Yeah, come on up. His campus involvement includes student government senator, Black Student Association. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Let me tell you a little bit more about him. His work with the college radio station WUTM includes serving as the assistant sports director and the lead color commentator for UTM and Westview football and basketball broadcast. He regularly volunteers on service Saturdays, has been a student employee in the communications department for three years, and has completed multiple summer internships in the Memphis area. As a resident assistant for the past two years, Derek has built relationships with residential students and assisted in enhancing the overall quality of life in the residence halls. Derek's nominator states, Derek epitomizes the outstanding leadership qualities we look for in UTM student leaders. I know he will bring honor and distinction to UTM throughout his future career. Congratulations, Derek Burton. I have another one to announce. Our second recipient of the Paul and Martha Meek Leadership Award is Emma Copley, a, a psychology major from Centerville, Tennessee. <laughs> Emma has been a dynamic student leader since she began at UT Martin. She has held numerous leadership roles, such as student government senator, psychi, Vice President, Student Ambassador, PEP Leader, and College Leader. Academically, she has participated in undergraduate research, studied abroad in Denmark, sir, and served as a supplemental instructor. This summer, she completed an internship in speech therapy at St. Thomas Ascension Hospital. 
She has spearheaded several community service events and has completed over 100 hours of community service. Emma provided leadership in her sorority, Alpha Omicron Pi, serving as Vice President for Programming and Enrichment, Director of Ritual Education, and Chaplain. One of Emma's nominators states, although she has made a wide impact at UTM, she is best known for just being positive. Her kind heart and spirit lights up the room. Congratulations, Emma Copeland. Congratulations, Dariq and Emma. Very well deserved. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Provost Philip Cavalier will now present our honors graduates for recognition. Graduating honors students are identified by the gold cords draped about their necks. They have achieved a grade point average within one of the following categories. Cum laude, 3.2 to 3.45, magna cum laude, 3.5 to 3.79, and summa cum laude, 3.8 to 4.0. At this time, students graduating cum laude, please stand, by, stand and be recognized. Yes, stand. be seated. Students graduating magna cum laude, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> Go ahead, be seated. And students gra graduating summa cum laude, please stand so we can recognize you. <laughs> and you'll be seated. The University Scholars Program aims to produce exceptional, critical thinkers who are prepared to meet the challenges of their individual pursuits after graduation. Students graduating with the University Scholars designation have successfully completed the four-year requirements of the program and can be recognized by the gold medallion draped about their necks. Adam Winchell is graduating as a University Scholar in this afternoon's ceremony. Adam, would you please stand and let us recognize you. You may be seated. So I would like to recognize another special group of graduates. If you are the first person in your family to earn a bachelor's degree, please stand. We want to congratulate you along with members of your family today. Congratulations. You may be seated. UT Martin is included on the 2023-2024 list of military-friendly schools as designated by Victory. This list evaluates institutions based on retention, graduation, and job placement rates as well as federal assistance programs for veterans, among other criteria. The Tennessee Higher Education Commission also designates UT Martin as a, a Tennessee Veterans Education Transition Support Campus. The VETS designation recognizes UT Martin's allocation of resources to assist veterans with the transition from military service to college enrollment. So members of our audience, if you are a veteran or currently serving in one of our military branches, I ask you to please stand and allow us to recognize you. I am proud to recognize two cadets who were on yesterday commissioned as second lieutenants in a ceremony yesterday. 
Uh, they are here in this graduation ceremony. If you would please stand, allow us to recognize and celebrate you. If any of our other graduates are military personnel or veterans, I would like to recognize you if you would please stand and allow us to thank you for your service to our country. We extend our grateful thanks to our veterans and military personnel. You may be seated. Now bringing greetings from the UTM Student Government Association Day today is SGA President Faith Pilkington. Faith is a senior from Ripley, Tennessee with double majors in political science and philosophy and plans to graduate next spring and attend law school. And she's got offers already. Faith is serving admirably during her senior year as SGA president and has been a valuable member of the UT Martin leadership team. Faith, please come forward. Thank you, Dr. Freeman. Good afternoon, faculty, proud parents, honored guests, and the graduating class of 2023. I extend my sincerest gratitude for giving me the privilege to address you all today as a student body president at the University of Tennessee at Martin. I'm Faith Pilkington, your SGA president, and while I haven't quite reached the graduation finish line yet, I stand here humbled and honored to share this momentous occasion with you all today. It has been amazing taking this journey with you and watching you all go towards a bright future. Let's reflect on the journey that has brought us all to this pivotal moment today. Late nights in the library, cramming for finals, and the shared struggle of finding parking. These are just a few of the things that unite us as students. We've also witnessed one another's numerous successes, but also our shortcomings. Our paths diverge in many ways, yet our collective journey is defined by one shared attribute here at UTM, resilience. Consider the downfalls, the accidental reply all to the group email, butchering a class presentation, or making that one bad grade that we thought would be the end of our educational career. Each misstep, every challenge, has contributed to your experience of becoming the strong individuals that stand before us today. We have all had our various challenges throughout our educational journey. The obstacles in your path do not define you and only make you better in the end. This is what makes UTM so special. You have people to support you and grow in the midst of adversity. Leaving UTM, you have made a family and connections that will undoubtedly last a lifetime. Today, I would like to give you all three pieces of advice that have guided my own journey and I believe hold relevance for the graduates before me. First, embrace failure as a facet of success. It is not an endpoint, but a crucial moment in the journey towards achievement and growth. You cannot have success without some defeat. Do not let this discourage you and instead use it as a fuel to keep pursuing your goals. Second, and never stop the pursuit of your dreams. Your life can be exactly what you make of it. Let passion drive you, and let dedication to your goals push you towards excellence. Success is a spectrum. Success means so many different things to each and every individual in this room, but what you set your mind to, you can absolutely accomplish with the right mindset and dedication. Lastly, recognize the value of relationships and treating others with kindness. The connections forged throughout your time at UTM may serve as a foundation for amazing future opportunities. 
be a light to those that you encounter. Oftentimes, we not, might not quite understand what somebody is going through. Understanding this, be compassionate. Be kind and treat others with utmost respect. As Maya Angelou once said, at the end of the day, people may forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. As you embark on this next phase of your journey, consider the broader impact of your choices. Your individual successes contribute to your personal legacy and serve as a testament to the resilience embedded in the very fabric of our community here at UTM. You are not merely graduates of UT Martin. You are the very picture of hard work and success. Seize the opportunities that lie ahead of you with purpose and commitment. Your actions today influence the narratives of tomorrow. Graduates, let perseverance be your guiding force as you step into the uncharted territories of your future. I know it may be scary, but take on your challenges with grace and know that these obstacles will make you better in the end. Your success is not just a personal triumph. It is a testament to your ability to grow. Class of 2023, as you celebrate your great achievement, do so with the knowledge that you possess the strength to overcome any challenge. Congratulations and may your journeys be full of continued success, beautiful memories created, and the fulfillment of your biggest dreams. Thank you and go Skyhawks. Thank you, Madam President. Now bringing greetings from the University of Tennessee System is Mr. Randy Boyd, President of the University of Tennessee System. President Boyd was, an, was appointed President of the University of Tennessee by the Board of Trustees, the UT Board of Trustees, on March 27, 2020, following a 16-month uh, period as Interim President. He serves as the Chief Executive officer of a statewide university system that includes six major campuses and statewide institutes of agriculture and public service. President Boyd served as the chair of the Tennessee Higher Education Commission and as commissioner of the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. He was founder and co-chair of the Governor's Rural Task Force, which exists to help state government and industry leaders find solutions to the biggest challenges facing rural Tennessee. He also served as Governor Bill Haslam's advisor for higher education and was the architect of Tennessee, for Tennessee Promise, Drive to 55, and Tennessee Achieves, initiatives aimed at increasing the number of Tennesseans with post-secondary degrees to 55% by 2025 and decreasing financial hardship for those Tennesseans pursuing degrees. President Boyd is the first in his family to graduate from college. He earned a bachelor's degree in business uh, with an emphasis in industrial management from UT Knoxville. He also earned a master's degree in liberal studies with a focus on foreign policy from the University of Oklahoma. Randy and his wife Jenny live in Knoxville. They have two children and two adorable grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce President Boyd to you. Thank you, Chancellor Freeman. I do especially appreciate the uh, shout out for my two grandchildren who are the center of our universe, the most important part of that bio. Well, it's great to be with you today. Esteemed faculty, proud parents, and honored guests, and graduates, of course, from the University of Tennessee with six campuses across the state of Tennessee with 59,000 students and over 400,000 alumni all around the world. We bring you greetings and congratulations. Today, we celebrate not just the conclusion of a chapter, but the beginning of a myriad of journeys that will take you into the future with, filled with great potential. At the University of Tennessee, across all of our campuses, from Mountain City to Memphis, we believe the power in education transforms lives. You are a testament to that belief. Each of you has shown resilience, dedication, and an unyielding pursuit of excellence. 
you have not only gained knowledge, but also the wisdom to apply it, the courage to challenge it, and the vision to extend it to the communities and the industries across our great state of Tennessee and beyond. As alumni, you represent a legacy steeped in innovation, leadership, and service. The world is awaiting you. The world that's awaiting you is one of rapid change and complex challenges. Yet there also lies tremendous opportunity, opportunity to innovate, to lead, and to serve, and to make a profound impact. I urge you to meet this world with the same grit, the same persistence, and heart that brought you here today. As you step out from this campus, remember that commencement doesn't signify an end, but a continuation of a lifelong journey of learning. Stay curious, stay compassionate, and stay connected, not just to UT, but to the communities and the causes that will benefit from your talents. In closing, I want to leave you with this thought. Education is not just a tool for your personal game. It's a passport to making a meaningful difference in the lives of others. So go forth, armed with your skills, your passions, and your degrees. Forge new paths, create new stories, and build a future that reflects the very best of what you've learned here. Again, congratulations on your remarkable achievement. We celebrate you today, and we eagerly anticipate the extraordinary things that you will do in the future. Thank you. Thank you, President Board. It is always wonderful to have you in Martin and to have you on campus. At this time, the deans will present members of this year's graduating class for the conferring of degrees. In the College of Education, Health, and Behavioral Science, will the candidates for the following degrees please rise. Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Education. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Health and Human Performance. Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Bachelor of Science in Social Work. Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies. Bachelor of Arts with a major in Psychology and Sociology. Bachelor of Science with a major in Psychology and Sociology. <laughs> Chancellor Freeman, President Boyd, the candidates you see before you have met all the requirements of their respective degrees as set by their most illustrious faculty and are ready to have their degrees conferred. Please be seated. Will the candidates for the following degrees in the College of Engineering and Natural Sciences please rise. Bachelor of Science with majors in all areas of biological sciences, including cell and molecular biology, ecology and environmental biology, organismal biology, biomedical health sciences, and pharmaceutical sciences. Bachelor of Science with all majors in all areas of chemistry, including chemical sciences, chemical physics, pharmaceutical sciences, health sciences, forensic science, organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, and biochemistry. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with majors in all areas of computer science, including data science, 
digital hardware and embedded systems, software and systems, as well as Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with all majors in all areas of engineering, including civil engineering, mechatronics engineering, manufacturing engineering, computer engineering, or electrical engineering, a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, and a Bachelor of Science in Construction Management. And those with a Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Arts with majors in all areas of mathematics and statistics, including mathematics, statistics, mathematics, secondary education, actuarial science, and applied mathematics. <laughs> Chancellor Freeman and President Boyd, the candidates before you have met all requirements for their respective degrees as set by our fantastic faculty, and they are ready for their degrees to be conferred. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. As you are able, will the candidates for the following degrees in the College of Humanities and Fine Arts please rise. Bachelor of Arts with majors in Communications, English, History, Spanish, and Philosophy. <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Arts. Bachelor of Mass Media and Strategic Communication. <laughs> Bachelor of Music and Bachelor of Arts in Music. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with majors in Communications, History, and Philosophy. Chancellor Freeman and President Boyd, the candidates before you have met all requirements for their respective degrees as set by our distinguished faculty and are ready for their degrees to be conferred. You may be seated. Good afternoon. Will the candidates for the following graduate degrees please rise? Master of Science in Education, Master of Science in Criminal Justice. Master of Sport Coaching and Performance. And Master of Arts in Strategic Communications. <laughs> Chancellor Freeman, President Boyd, the candidates before you have met all requirements for their respective master's degrees as set by the graduate faculty of the University of Tennessee at Martin and are ready for their degrees to be conferred. Please be seated. So before we confer degrees, I would like to recognize the following people who have been instrumental in helping candidates complete their programs of study. Moms and dads of graduates, please stay and let us acknowledge you. <laughs> Spouses and children of graduates, please stand. Great grandparents, grandparents, and guardians, please stand. Brothers, sisters, family members, and friends, please stand.
candidates, please stand. That's all of you, all of y'all, come on, get up. And please join me in giving a big round of applause to those individuals who have helped you get to where you are. Okay, candidates, I need you to continue standing, and I would ask uh, President Boyd to join me at the podium for conferring of the degrees, and congratulations to the graduates. Okay, candidates, this is the moment we've been waiting for. By the virtue of the authority of the state of Tennessee, vested in the Board of Trustees of the University of Tennessee, and by them, delegated to me, it hereby gives me great pleasure to confer upon you the respective degrees for which you have been recommended with all the rights, privileges, honors, and obligations appertaining thereto. You are hereby recognized as the university graduates and alumni of the University of Tennessee Martin. Congratulations. Woo. You may now be seated. So graduates, you have now joined over 53,000 alums of this institution. And I would like, if you give me just a moment of privilege here, I would like to hear applause from this audience, since we've conferred degrees, I'd like to hear applause from this audience as if all 53,000 alums were here cheering them on. At this time, graduates will be recognized individually. Graduates, please begin making your way to the stage. Announcing the names today are Dr. Robert Nanny, Professor of Communications and Chair of Mass Media and Strategic Communications, and Dr. Richard Robinson, Professor of Communications. <clears throat> Graduating from the College of Engineering and Natural Sciences. Kurt Matthew Brandt. Cassidy L. Harris, cum laude. Lindsey Grace Moore. Latreya Powell. Madison Denise Burton, magna cum laude. What's your first name? Badia Junchelle Walker. Hayden T. D. Berry, cum laude. Adam Christopher Winchell, magna cum laude. Shantorian Ciara Boyle, magna cum laude. Catherine Josie Hunt, summa cum laude. Tanner Robert Prater, cum laude. Lucy June Golden. Andy Lum. Andrew Marshall. 
Andrew Newbill. Taylee Howard, cum laude. Graduating in the College of Humanities and Fine Arts. Ariana M. Claros, summa cum laude. Caroline Allison Hughes, magna cum laude. Leslie Luann Simpson, cum laude. Derek Burton. Amir Rashad Gray. Kaylee Michon, Sigma, Sigma Cum Laude. Sigma Cum Laude, sorry. Lakin Isabella Overton. Callie Ann Stone, Magna Cum Laude. Drake Nikita Box. Martha Jane Hooper, Magna Cum Laude. Alexia Kitara Knox. William Hunter Spencer, Summa Cum Laude. Mason Johnson Taylor. Austin K. Carnell. Elijah Estelle Davidson, Summa Cum Laude. Escobar. Patricia Escobar. Nylon Therese Barr, Summa Cum Laude. Mackenzie Lynn Milburn, Cum Laude. Caroline K. Oldfather, Magna Cum Laude. Wesley Aaron Schleiger. William Owen Smith. Daniel Cooper Scott. Timothy Mason Taylor, Jr. Graduating from the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences, Andrew Edward Bell. <laughs> Jemiah Alexandria Bell. Morgan F. Brewer, cum laude. Abigail Grace Davis, magna cum laude. Evan Anthony Johnson. Kyra L. Johnson. Madeline Greer Kilpatrick, summa cum laude. Geneva Grace Leak. Sydney Ann Nickrant, magna cum laude. Alyssa Danielle Poff. Last name. Kyla Shea Romke. Ashley R. Schramer, cum laude. Zoe Elizabeth Springer, summa cum laude. Aubrey Lee Taylor. Joel Wayne Carroll, summa cum laude. Curtis Michael Ryan White. Isaiah Devin Abdullah. Trinity C. Beard. 
Cornelius Wilson Brown IV. Lacey M. Burnett, magna cum laude. Hal Bynum. <laughs> Lindsay Ellen Cannon, magna cum laude. <laughs> William Cassidy. <laughs> Mallory Hope Chisholm, cum laude. Whitney K. Clark. Jaslyn Lee Coffey. Jalen Cole. Landon Alessandra Collett. Calvin Clay Cruz. I Kevin Salviate Curry. <laughs> Madison Lee de Graffenreed. Sage Benjamin Duffy. Jeremiah Adante Edwards. Carson Blaine Evans. Hallie Grace Everett. Lauren Riley Farrell. Seth Patrick Gatlin. Isaiah Rijal Gibbs. Jaden Elijah Gibbs. Crystal Michelle Goff, Vincent L. Guy, Tashina Marie Howard, Elias, Elias James Istrid, James Hollis Henson. Kendarius D. Holloman. Kobe M Michael Jeffries. Luke Mitchell Kale, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Huggins Kiersey, magna cum laude. Adrenique Lachey Merriweather. Riley May Miles. Ashlyn Kaylee Neely. Robert Eugene Nicholson. Willie T. O'Donnell III. Olivia Ryan O'Keefe. Christiane S. Owens. <laughs> Second Lieutenant William Connor Ramage. Demirni Yarne Reed. Jay Rogers. Maggie Ray Smith, magna cum laude. Okay. Dana Nicole Yarborough Snow. Jordan Snyder. Emma C. Spessert. 
Elijah Andrew Tittle, summa cum laude. Catherine Louise Ward. Kira Renee Washington. Andrea J. Webb. Elizabeth Christine Wintzel. Emily Danielle Wright. Ariana Marlise Bell. Sarah Grace Bradford. Chloe E. Brannon, cum laude. Jasmine Nicole Bryant, magna cum laude. Caitlin C. Hayes, magna cum laude. Chloe Joyner, summa cum laude. Anita Marie Servin. Helen Jeanette Smith. Haley Stample, cum laude. Dariana A. Bishop, magna cum laude. Lucas L. Cagle, summa cum laude. J. Thomas Conrad. Carmen Alexis Crawford. Nathaniel Devon Elliott, magna cum laude. Madison B. Jones. Hunter Rodriguez Kendall. Jackson Matthias Lucas. Zachary Brian Mengram, magna cum laude. Christina Renee Mills. Cade Bolden Richards, magna cum laude. Noah W. B. Smith, cum laude. Nicole Denise Wilson, magna cum laude. Emma Gracie Copley, summa cum laude. Zachary Stephen Foster, summa cum laude. Jenna John Ann James. Christina Michelle Newsy. Casey L. Wayne. Patty Catherine Spencer, summa cum laude. Wait a minute, just a Nia J. Tate. Kia Tia Lachey Harvey. Now graduating with master's degrees as denoted by their hoods in the College of Humanities and Fine Arts, Brittany Joy Boss. <laughs> Kayla Lauren Dillon. In the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences, Mackenzie Rahm Brewer. <laughs> Alyssa Lane Downing. <laughs> Lauren Jones Green. Holly Crane Reiner, Sarah Searcy Kennedy, Sheila Renee McCuller, Jennifer Moore, Patty Oldham, 
Robert Bailey Patterson. Haley Brooke Petty. Tamika Ratundra Scruggs. Summer Hope Simons. Taylor Shay Spurlock. Cheryl Vanessa Turner. Jasmine Elaine Cannon. Caitlin Faith Collins. Caitlin Elizabeth Farmer. Elizabeth Joy Hargis. Kimberly Hudgens. Christy M. Lee. Caleb Richardson. Hunter S. Strickland. Logan Lynn Wallach. Sadie Wienia. Sydney Brooke Church. Alexandria L. Driver. <laughs> Tiffany Ann Greer. <laughs> Burley G. High Eagle. Corey Chanel Milan. Zachary Miles Morphis. Sydney May Roney. Megan Simpson. Lamonte Delon Thomas. Tina J. Wicker. Robert Saxon Durham, Criminal Justice. Amy N. Phillips. Skylar A. Sublet. You'll note several students wearing a green cord, which indicates they participated in this year's Senior Gift Challenge. We are proud of all of our students and are excited that these brand new alumni are already paying it forward by giving back to their alma mater. If you participated in the Senior Gift Challenge this year, please stand and allow us to recognize you. Thank you, you may be seated. Next, I will introduce Dr. Andy Luter, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, who will come on behalf of the UTM Alumni Association. Following Dr. Luter's remarks, we ask that you please stand as Ms. Caroline Oldfather will sing the alma mater accompanied by Dr. Elaine Harris, and we will be dismissed after the platform party uh, participants and the faculty recess. Thank you again.
Thank you, Chancellor Freeman. As a UT Martin alumnus, I have the pleasure of welcoming you to the ranks of UT Martin alumni living all around the world. I believe that some of the graduates consider this event to be a culmination, an end to their university experience, but it doesn't have to be. As you leave UT Martin and set out to face new challenges in the days, the months, and the years ahead, Remember that there are over 53,000 UT Martin graduates, and that number jumps to 400,000 alumni when you include the entire UT system. These men and women are eager to know you and to help you. They, along with the UT Martin Office of Alumni Relations and the UT Alumni Association, are here to support you long after you walk across the stage. So I challenge you to do three things going forward. First, be an advocate for UT Martin. Display your diploma proudly and tell your friends and future coworkers about the great experiences you had at UT Martin. It helps us recruit talented students and that only enhances the value of your degree you received today. Remember, it's always a great day to be a Skyhawk. Second, stay in touch. Keep your contact information up to date at alumni.utm.edu. Keep your alma mater in mind when you have exciting news to share. The university can't communicate with you and invite you to events if we don't know how to reach you after graduation. And third, get involved. There are various social and net career networking opportunities throughout that the UT Martin Alumni Association provides. As soon as you can, find an event that appeals to you and attend. Come back and visit campus as often as you can. And if asked to serve on a board, please consider it. After today, you always be linked to UTM. A university is only as good as its graduates. And from this point forward, your accomplishments, your achievements, and the way in which you live reflect upon the educational values of UT Martin. You have achieved a great milestone by completing your degree. And on behalf of all the UT Martin alumni, congratulations. And I wish you every success. Please stand for the singing of our alma mater.